Welcome back fellow mobile gamers, I'm your host Nimble Thor, and today we will be talking about the 5 most interesting games I played last week, spending just a minute per game to give you a quick brief overview and hopefully you guys appreciate that. My game of the week is at the end of the video and if you want to dive deeper into each game, I've left the links for the full videos of each game and the Google Play and App Store download links in the description box of this video. So this week's episode will include a tactical SRPG based on a nearly 30 year old game IP, a new casual indie golf game, a a difficult parkour inspired level based runner, a 2D survival RPG with unique grey tone graphics, and finally, a 4 vs 4 hero based shooter aiming to be the overwatch of mobile. Before we get started though, did you guys remember to show the like and subscribe button some love? Because they're really lonely and I kinda promised that I'd find someone to click their buttons, so do us all a favor and make their day please. And with that said, let's get to the first game. Aris Virus is a 2D survival game that mixes RPG elements with a grey tone post-apocalyptic world and some relatively hardcore survival gameplay elements. Progression is very slow in this game and you will spend a lot of time running back and forth to collect resources unless you buy the $1 back upgrade, but at least the world exploration is interesting and due to the difficulty, crafting new items actually feels rewarding in this game. Monetizing through the occasional advertisement and in-app purchases that go up to $50 to make the game less grindy, the monetization is better than in for example Last Day on Earth Survival, but the back upgrade feels almost necessary to enjoy this game. The game requires online access, it takes up 294 megabyte of space, it's out both on Android and on iOS, and my verdict is that if you enjoy these grindy survival games and don't mind spending a dollar or two on extra inventory space, you should definitely give Ares Virus a go. Nano Golf Hole in One is a fun casual golf game where we have just a single shot at making a hole in one and thus progress to the next random level, aiming of course to get as far as possible before eventually losing. There are plenty of characters to unlock using in-game gold, each of which change the level designs as well, and with no energy systems, loot boxes or lives, the game truly feels like a good old mobile game. It's simple, but it's fun. The game can be played offline, it takes up only 101 megabyte of space, it's available on Android and iOS, and my my final verdict is that unless you absolutely hate casual games, you should definitely take Nano Golf for a swing. Mad Runner is a forward running, level based, parkour inspired game where we jump from platform to platform across a wide range of different levels, ranging from your modern city skylines to fantasy orc fortresses. The game's 15 levels and endless mode are very difficult, and the wacky art style and humorous characters remind me of indie platformer Blackmore with the difficulty of a game like Glitch Dash, for example. The frequent advertisements between levels can be removed through a single $2 inner purchase, and although the game does have a life energy system, I I never even once ended up using all of my lives. The game can be played offline, it takes up 200 megabytes of space, it's out on Android and iOS, and my verdict is that you should definitely give it a go if you haven't played a forward runner in a while and you're looking for some goofy fun. Not unlike Frag Pro Shooter, Heroes of Warland is a 4 vs 4 hero based shooter that aims to mix Overwatch like hero shooting gameplay with a card based upgrading system that unlocks new stat boosts for our characters and their weapons. The loot boxes rewarded from winning matches open instantly which is a very welcome change. The developers genuinely seem to listen to the community and the heroes are interesting but the game is currently held back by glitches and errors making it feel less polished than other shooters on mobile. The card system sadly also also makes the game's in-app purchases pay to win, which is a real shame since the game has potential and is actually decently fun to play. The game requires online access, it takes up 355 megabyte of space, it's available on Android and on iOS, and my verdict is that you should consider playing it, but just be aware of the inherent pay to win and the current glitches, which I'm sure will be a turn off for some of you guys. Langrisser is a high quality, turn based SRPG with great depth to its tactical combat system and only a light focus on the bot controlled PvP matches, which is fortunate since it means that the game does not feel pay to win despite the gacha hero unlocking mechanics. In terms of gameplay, the game has a lot to offer and is packed with content, with an interesting story that has an English voiceover in addition to the original Japanese version, plenty of missions, skills, an open world that allows us to follow the main story or complete side quests and boss fights, and everything else I'd expect from a great RPG game. Langrisa does have an energy system, but I never feel limited by it myself, and you can easily get at least 30 to 45 minutes of playtime per play session as both missions and leveling up rewards free energy. While I would of course rather see them completely gone from the game, both the energy system and the gacha elements are implemented in a very non-forceful way that ensures the game does not feel too heavily monetized. The game requires online access, it takes up 2.04 gigabyte of space, it's available on Android 
and on iOS, and if you enjoy tactical turn-based RPGs, the game is a bit of a no-brainer. It's my favorite game of the week, and I feel confident that you will have fun playing it. Thank you very much for watching yet another video, Nimble Squad. Let me know which game was your favorite, and until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.